Hello, and thank you for watching this January 9th weather update brought to you by Agribolt, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co-founder of Agribolt. Well, this week, I have to start off with this map made by a colleague of mine, Ryan Maui. It shows the surface air temperatures across the United States last weekend, and man, was it cold. In fact, the average temperature across a lower 48 was 11 degrees Fahrenheit on Saturday morning. Even Florida recorded below freezing temperatures. Actually, because this cold air advanced so far south, a low-pressure system that formed in the Gulf of Mexico before running northward along the east coast of the United States was able to produce ice, sleet, and snow in the southeast. This system caused hundreds of car accidents, and major interstates like I-65 that runs through Alabama still had parts that were shut down due to accidents and ice-covered bridges through midday on Saturday. Now, really heavy snow fell across fields in North Carolina before the system dumped quite a bit of snow again in the Northeast. So this system had a big impact across the South and across the East Coast of the United States. But before we talk about the huge snowfall totals out West, this map shows that on Sunday, every U.S. state except Florida had snow on the ground. So let's turn our attention to the West Coast. Even before we get most of the snow that's in the forecast, the mountain snowpack looks great. Each snow depth reporting station out west is shown here as a percent of normal for basin average snow water content. Essentially, 100% is normal. So all of these stations above 100% are having a great year. This is extremely important for agriculture in the west, as winter snowpack is crucial for spring and summer irrigation. But look at those four reporting stations in California. Well, that snow cover is complements of a feature in the jet stream called the Pineapple Express. Essentially, the jet stream flows from the tropics near Hawaii straight into the west coast of the United States. The result is a constant stream of moisture moving at times well over 150 miles per hour in the jet stream. When that air is lifted over the mountains, several feet of snow can fall. Meteorologists watch the position of the jet stream across the Pacific all winter, and when it flows like this, a lot of snow will build up along the coastal ranges as well as the Rockies. Basically, wherever those fast winds take aim, prepare for a lot of rain and snow. Well, here are the projected snowfall totals by the GFS model through the next 10 days. Some peaks in the Sierras are forecast to get over 100 inches of snow in that time period. Now, while the snow will go a long way in helping to alleviate the drought in Southern California, remember that it's taken five years for this drought to get as bad as it is in this state. One big event like this will fill reservoirs and really help out with this water year, as we call it, but it won't end the drought permanently. But since California is the nation's leading producer in over 40 fruits and vegetables, this will have a significant impact on U.S. agriculture in the coming growing season. Now, coming back toward the Corn Belt, many are asking when we're going to see a break in these colder temperatures. Well, the answer is really soon. On Monday, we are watching the development of a low-pressure system that will track from Wyoming toward Lake Superior. Expect snow and ice and sleet potentially on Monday near the border between Iowa and Minnesota, and then mostly snow for points that are farther to the north of there. But see the strong pressure gradient in the closely spaced isobars across Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio? Well, that will signal a really windy day. Here are the forecast wind speeds on Tuesday at noon, and that same region will experience sustained winds of 20 to 25 knots, and occasionally these winds are going to gust well above 30. But given their southerly trajectory, as they curl around the low over Lake Superior, these winds will be quite warm, although it will be quite wet too. But here's the forecast for temperature anomalies on Tuesday. We are forecasting temperatures to be up to 20 degrees warmer than normal across this region here. And since the track of this low is pretty far to the north, this warmer air really hangs around for the rest of the week. But this is where I start to get really concerned. Here is the surface air temperature map on Friday of this week. Look at the contrast in temperatures as the eastern two-thirds of the country is divided by a powerful front. Illinois will have over 60 degrees of temperature spread from north to south on that day. Well, what I'm concerned about is this. Those contrasting temperatures and that powerful front is forming due to the clockwise circulation around two large high-pressure systems. The one off the east coast is bringing warm air northward, and the one over the Dakotas is bringing Arctic air southward. Where they meet, 
the warm, moist air is lifted over the front to produce the precipitation. Now, what I am concerned about is how a shallow layer of below freezing air will slide underneath this warm air, setting up the perfect situation for an ice storm. We must watch this closely all week, as this could produce very hazardous weather conditions for this weekend across this region. Well, finally, let's turn our attention to South America. The trouble areas this year have been Argentina, which has been wet in October, then really dry for about 45 days leading into mid-December, which was during their planting season, and then it got wet again toward the end of the year and the start of 2017. And as you can see here, the GFS has this region getting quite a bit more rain over the next 10 days. Now, Brazil's growing regions have been doing really well this year, except for those in the northeastern growing areas right in through here, which have been struggling with some drier conditions. But overall, the South American crop really hasn't had too much temperature stress so far, and only a few regions have been stressed for moisture, so things are looking pretty good at this point in time. Well, as always, we at Agribull will bring you the latest and best weather forecast information through our morning farm report so that you can efficiently plan your operations. We thank you for your attention, and we hope you look forward to our next weather video update. Thank you.